the brakes, front brakes on my girlfriend's car, which is just a Honda Accord, nothing fancy about it. Now we gotta get the caliper bolts off, and right there, this bolt, that big one right there is the caliper bolt, but I'm gonna try to get my socket on it, and when it fit, because of this brake line, so you have to get that bolt off right there, that's a 12 meter, 12 millimeter. Alright, okay, now we got that line free, we're able to go ahead and get to that caliper bolt, which is a 17 millimeter. Let's get this bolt right back in its spot so I don't lose it. There's going to be another one on the bottom as well. You'll be able to see it. Now we got the bolts loose. Let's go ahead and remove this caliper. But before we do that, you want to make sure you have something to hang this caliper. All I'm doing is just taking off the caliper bolt right now by hand. Once you break that initial uh, force on it, they just spin out by hand. There's no extra force really required on them. They come out pretty easily. They're just just these little bolts. They're nothing nothing really fancy, nothing long. They're just they have a very important job though, so you want to make sure you put them in right. Because they hold the caliper which ultimately stops the car. Let me get the top one off now. So I went back to that uh, junk drawer I have and I found this piece of wire. It's a uh, looks like it's some lighting wire due to the connector. Rotor. So let's go ahead and support it. We're just going to run it through the center here. Really. So now that we have the caliper supported by the wire, not on its brake line, we got to go ahead and remove this rotor. Now with Honda's, or in particular this car, you have two screws here, two Phillips head screws that are holding on the rotor. So I tried another screwdriver uh, with these rotors with Hondas. They have, or this particular one, I'm not sure about all Hondas, I don't work on them. Uh, they have screws that hold on their rotors. I uh, tried to do it with the screwdriver, couldn't get it to work, almost broke one. Uh, when in doubt, just bring out a power tool and just be very careful when you do it and see if you can get the screw out. I can tell the screwdriver, I almost, I almost rusted that one, or not rusted, stripped that one out. But with the screwdriver, hopefully, I could get it out without damaging or stripping it out any further. So as you can tell, it's on there pretty good. I was able to get this one off, which was good, so we're halfway there. I might need to put the penetrating loop uh, on it. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get some penetrating lube on it and let it sit for a couple minutes and then go ahead and... The penetrating uh, oil that I use is Liquid Wrench. Uh, I found that it works the best for me. I have also haven't bought any recently as in the past year, so there could be better ones out there. But since I still have some of this left, we're just going to go ahead, put on the screw, and we're just going to let it sit for about 15 minutes. So it's been about 15 minutes since we put liquid wrench penetrating oil on the stubborn little Phillips head screw here that holds on the cal not caliper, I keep saying that, the rotor. And let's go see how well it works on getting this bolt loose because as you saw, I've held the button down on this and tried to get it off and it just wasn't working. I was afraid of burning out the drill. But it's been about 15 minutes. Let's see if it worked. Works almost every time. And before I do the next side, I'm going to go ahead and put all the bolts, the liquid wrench on them, so I don't have to fight them as much as I did on this one. Anyway, let's go ahead and get this rotor off. Uh, since it's been up, so sometimes they don't like to come off. They want to stay on, but since we probably pounded it with a hammer drill on that bolt, Oh crap, see? See? Good thing I caught that before it fell. The caliper almost just fell and ripped the line off and I would have had a 30 minute brake job 
into an hour long brake job because one little uh, Let's go ahead and re secure that. This old rotor, so we can put a new one on. So, like I said, this rotor's had about 83,000 miles worth of wear on it. Um, it's pretty well beat up. I can see inside, just looking down the plane of it, I can see little waves in it. And uh, I think it's time for the new ones. So, uh, let's see what the new ones are. Rotor on, and then we'll move to the brake. Brake caliper putting on new pads. Now this, since we had those two Phillips head screws to take off, got to make sure you lined up the countersunk holes on the hub right here on the hub that they line up with these countersunk holes. These, these countersunk holes so that Tighten it back down. Go ahead and do that. I don't know if me spinning like that did anything, but I think it did. Grab one of our screws, grab the impact here. Make sure to change the direction so I'm not backing it out. Give myself a good bite here. Yep, put it right on it. There we go. Grab the screw gun. Now let's go very slowly. Don't want to crank it down just yet. You know, cross it. And that's it. Let's go ahead and get the other one on and start working on caliper. Make sure everything's nice and tight. Nothing's wiggling. Let's move on. Caliper is always fun because you kind of got to support the weight of them while working on it. They also have which carriage, cradle, whatever you want to call it, which is what the brake pads actually sit in. So we got to go ahead and take these two bolts off, which will therefore release the cradle or carriage of the pads so that the we can change the pads on it. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and grab myself some liquid wrench, put it on these bolts. Let it sit for 15 minutes and then we'll go ahead and go ahead and get the carriage and, or cradle, whatever you want to call it, off. One thing that I like to do is you could go ahead and just tap the nut top of it a little bit. I don't know if this actually works or not. It could just be an old wise man, wise man myth, but I was told that it helps get into the threads a little bit faster. But we're just going to go ahead and let that sit for 15 minutes. Um, let's get back at it. So the one thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put the caliper back on because we can take this cradle or carriage off while the caliper is mounted. We don't have to worry about holding the caliper. Let's go ahead. Well, it's actually going to be kind of hard to mount the caliper because the pads are now, um, the disc, actually the rotor is now thicker and the pads were set up for, or the caliper was set up for the old one. So it's closer. We're going to have to compress the caliper to get it back on. So now I'm going to go ahead and compress the caliper with my kit. Uh, it's pretty simple. I just have one screw device. This is like a universal pusher. There's a little magnet in the center. Stick it on there. It goes like that. Here's your backing plate. So let's go push against the other side. Stick it on like that. So now you have this resting against the back side. And you twist in or twist out. And it pushes the piston back in inside the caliper so to help to make your life easier what you can do is open up the hood take the brake reservoir cap off so that fluid could go back in and you're not putting pressure in the system and it just makes it a little easier so we're going to go ahead pop the hood take the brake reservoir cap crack it loose and compress this caliper so we can get the pads out and we're going to put the new pads in and put this all back together so i went ahead and cracked the brake uh, reservoir open so that the fluid, when we push back and go back into the reservoir, we're not putting pressure in the system. Um, if you forget to do that, it's not the end of the world, it just makes it a little bit harder. So let's go ahead and get this caliper compressing tool in there. What we're going to need to do is hold up the caliper. We're going to have to take off this pad right here 
Got a little hammer. There's some metal clips here. Go ahead and knock the right out. All right, now that the power the bolt is tight, we're gonna go ahead and break the um, carriage bolts, and they are a nine sixteenths socket. The liquor wrench has been on there for about 20 minutes or so, so they should just be able to. There's the other one. So now we got the caliper loose. We got these two little um, metal hooks that we're going to hold it in place. It has a brace on it. We we'll put this in like so. This is free spinning, so when I crank down on it, it doesn't spin itself in. There we go. So now that we got this all set up, see it going in like so. This is requiring next to no effort since I have that um, cap off the reservoir. I'm maybe applying a pound of force. I'm going to bring it all the way in until it bottoms out. And that's close enough. It didn't completely bottom out, but that should be enough to get the new pads in. Now that we've got the caliper compressed, I have to go ahead and get these brake pads ready with these metal clips to get into the carriage so I can put the caliper back on. Alright, I was able to get the caliper all put back together. Uh, it wasn't that hard. The metal clips weren't really that hard to deal with. I could have filmed it, but they are just basically, they went from caliper to caliper, and they just kind of allowed the caliper to pull itself apart. So I'm assuming that when the brake, or when the piston, when you let off the brake pedal, the piston recedes. It just pulls the, cal the pads just off, just enough so that they're not burning up the rotor. Um, so I got it back on, it's all put back together, the bolts are just finger tight, well they're not even finger tight, they're, I'm finger tightening them now, the carriage bolts, uh, you gotta remember that whatever bolts you take off, you gotta put back on, uh, so these are going back on as we speak, just working them side by side, that piston compressing tool made a hell of a lot easier, this just, the, the caliper just slid right on, you can actually see I have a little play in it, but that's okay. Um, one thing you, one thing you gotta remember, that once you do a brake job, uh, before you drive anywhere, make sure that the brake pedal's working. So you're gonna have to push on it a little bit to get the pressure back in the line. All right, we are back in the car. Everything's all put back together. I'm gonna show you now pumping the brakes to get uh, the caliper piston back to the. Uh, uh, correct pressure I have the cap typed off uh, locked off and everything you can see that I can push it to the floor no problem comes back and boom I already got pressure it took one full pump and we're back let's go test drive the car make sure everything is working as it all right we are doing the test drive in the car now uh, I'm gonna kind of do a panic stop at a low speed just to make sure everything is all settled I just pressed it a little bit um, everything seems to be working, no squeaking, no abnormal pulling to the left or right. So I'm just going to do a panic stop here at 20 miles an hour. And we'll just make sure that everything's working just fine. Yes, it stops much better now. The brake feels much better. Uh, the pedal's not going as far. We're going to get up to speed to see if that wobble went away that I think that's what caused the wobble was a uh, warped brake rotors I would consider this job a success and if you want more video content like this go ahead and hit that subscribe button because